Welcome back to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Terry, doing the editorial on tanking in all sports, I would say, but most definitely the NBA. Um, but before I start, I do want to apologize. <laughs> um, did a video for uh, my thoughts on the Bulls drafting um, Chandler Hutchinson last night. And I accidentally called the man Adam Hutchinson, like the whole thing. It was so embarrassing. It was funny because after I recorded it, you know, I'm um, putting the pictures and the video together and I couldn't find him. I'm like, where's Adam Hutchinson at? And finally realized it was Chandler Hutchinson. And I think it was just one of the things, you know, when you hear someone say something or you see an, us a word and then you're typing and you automatically put it. Like something like that, because I I was looking. I think it was someone I was looking at. It saw so said Adam, and that was kind of the first thing in my mind. So I apologize about that. That was unprofessional um, and funny. Uh, <laughs> but also on top of that, um, I just want to clear up. I didn't say he was a bad player or a bad pick. Uh, all I was saying is that he has added pressure because of what the Bulls did with him. That's all I was saying. So some. Some people are telling me ah, I disagree. He's not a bad pick, or I like. I didn't say he was a bad pick. I didn't say anything about him as a player. All I said was he has added pressure. But anyway, this has been a long time coming, and honestly, this might not be the last video uh, that I do or episode that I do for this because I hate tanking. Tanking is so terrible like i've it, it angers me to no limit and i've always wanted to talk about it i know i do a lot more i was you know caught up in the uh draft stuff for a long time doing the bear stuff so now that i got time to do editorials i i'm so ready to talk about tanking it is it's detrimental to the league but i won't say it's the most the most detrimental of super teams i already did my thoughts on that but i would say Tanking is next to the uh, worst thing in the league uh, for NBA, I should say, because tanking just kills competition. It's the same thing at the core of super teams. It's all about killing competition. And when we were talking about uh, professional sports, there's a whole nother level of complexity with um, with um, the business part of it and how you have a consumer business relationship and there is no business model out there that tells you it's okay to deliberately make your product worse while still charging someone money and it's not like uh deliberate or sneaking and not telling someone it's like bold face hey fans we're going to tank now <laughs> and you're going to still pay the same prices and come watch these games, if you come watch the games. And that's not okay. And it is not just about the ticket prices, but it's about your team sport. Like, a lot of the stuff you pay for, especially if you live in the city, it, like, that goes to the team. A lot of what the team does generates business. It could be generating business for you. And it, there's just a symbiotic relationship. And to tell your fans, we're going to give you a worse product, it's not okay on that level. But then you're talking about the sports level. The competition is terrible. And then it's one feeds the other. And people say chicken or the egg. It's not chicken or the egg. Super teams came first, then tanking came. So, but they are in a vicious circle where people sit here and say, oh man, these super teams suck. There's no competition. We don't, uh, we already know who's going to win. No one else has a chance. True. But then there's also, because teams are tanking, you know there's a whole section of the league that never is even going to compete. So it's like both are hurting. And I don't, I don't understand, for me, I never understand why people are so on board with tanking. That's the most frustrating thing. The Sixers doing it and a couple teams following them, okay. But then when you get analysts, when you get talking heads, when you get fans, all asking for a tank. That's, that's crazy to me because if the players lack competition, that's one thing. But as we as fans don't want competition, we don't want to see people win. That's a problem to me. That's a problem in sports. And so I, I hate to see it in the NBA so uh, prevalent because you're essentially just saying, 
okay, well, if we're not a championship competing, then what's the point in playing? Like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like, that is so opposite of anything sports. And maybe it's because I coach and there's a uh, furious love of competition for me. And maybe that I can't wrap my head around it. But I know there's other, a lot of other people that feel that way. It's just that it's it makes no sense that you can sit here and say, I'm okay with not competing. And people say, like, okay, like the narrative I hate the most with Chicago is that, man, the Bulls, the Bulls just are stuck in the middle. It's the worst place. It's basketball hell. Not good enough for a lottery pick. Not good enough to advance in the playoffs. Like, getting to the playoffs should be a good thing. It shouldn't be bad. The fact my team gets to keep playing. The fact I get to root every game in this series, live and die. And they're like, well, if you're not going to advance, what's the point? How do you know? In a regular competitive league, how would you know if you're going to advance? Like football. Parody is there. Even though certain teams make it to the Super Bowl a lot, but we know with the wild card, with any round, any team could win. It could be crazy like the Vikings upsetting the Saints. You never know. It, it could be anything. The Vikings, who were the Super Bowl favorites, get destroyed by the Eagles. Like, in a league with parody, how do you know? You don't. You just want a chance to get there and find out and root for your team along the way. And that's what's missing in basketball where, and I would say to an extent baseball, but we'll get to other leagues, but it's missing in basketball bad. Whereas like, I don't, we, we know we're not going. We're not the Warriors. We don't have LeBron. We're not going. So there's no point in trying. And that's sad. That is sad. Now, are the players in the playoffs acting that way? Of course not. For the most part, I would say from what I've seen, people compete. You saw the Pacers take the Cavs to seven. The Boston take the Cavs to seven. Uh, you saw Houston take the Warriors to seven. Um, you saw the Pelicans uh, upset and win the series. So when they get there, they compete, but it's the fans and the talking heads and the GMs. The GMs getting mad because you got the AC. Like, it's so dumb. There, there was a time when you wanted the chance to compete. You wanted the chance to find out, hey, maybe we lose. But we want that chance to try and win. And it wasn't a bad thing to have a perennial playoff team. My team, like Buffalo Bills, you think uh, 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 any fan, if you told them, hey, you can go to four straight Super Bowls, would you take that with no guarantee of winning? Of course they would. I don't, I, I probably feel like if you ask any Bills fans, I don't know, cause I'm not a Bills fan, but if you ask them right now, do you regret going to four Super Bowls? No, because at the time, when you get there, you got the chance to win. So all this hindsight of, oh, they, what was the point of them going to the playoffs? They didn't even win. Like, that's stupid. That's like saying, what was the point of the Bills going to four Super Bowls? They weren't going to win. That's dumb. In the moment, you don't know, so you have to compete. And so time does play a factor. And this whole tanking thing is just trying to uh, do it backwards, where it's like, uh, we're going to guess that we won't make it, so I, there's no point in trying. And that's such a defeatist a- attitude, and that's not sports. Now, what has it done to the league? Again, I don't watch basketball until, not even the playoffs. I don't watch, I only watch the finals. And now I might try to watch this next year, but it's been like that for like five years since, uh, Super teams took over because it's like it's, it's not competitive. And so I don't care. And uh, tanking just continues to hurt that. So you got people that aren't as interested or that aren't interested until the playoffs. And it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be what a regular season doesn't matter. Part of that is the length and how many games. But it shouldn't be a point where. Teams are resting their players 20 games throughout the season because they know that the regular season don't matter. I, I like, I, I don't see how a league that operates that way is good or good for the fans or anybody else. And so people sit there and tell me like, yeah, we should be tanking. We, well, what's the point? We're not, we, we're not going to win. So we shouldn't go to playoffs. We should try to get the highest pick possible. And so, Okay, so what? So we suck. Am I supposed to watch us suck? 
Am I supposed to pay tickets to go see us suck? No. I'm going to ignore the games. And I'm sure a lot of people do. And so you're telling me that that is better than a team where I can tune in every night and root for them. That I can sit at home and root for them. Go out with the crew to the bar, watch the game and root for them. Go buy a ticket, go watch a game and root for them. And then when the playoffs come, I get locked in and I live and die with each game because we could uh, get to the next uh, part. How is that not better than, oh, we're not good enough, so let's just suck real bad. I'm not going to watch anything. I'm just going to pop in uh, during June to check the draft, see who we drafted, and then I'm going to check out. How is that better? How is that better for anybody? That's terrible. Now, of course, it's not like the people are boycotting the Bulls because Bulls aren't fully tanking. Like, they're kind of tanking. And people that fully tank, like, they just trade away. If you're good, you gone. Then those are the teams that tank. So Bulls aren't doing that. If the Bulls did that, I don't think we would have sold out games like we uh, do right now. I, 100%, I don't think we would. But anyway, you... The conversations are just backwards to me. It's like a bizarro world. You're hearing people, did you see the Bulls won last night? Oh, I'm so pissed. How could you let those players play? How could you sit here and let them win the game? You should have benched everybody. You should have put in the scrubs off the street. Like, how, like, how does that foster anything good? The way to win now, and, and here, let's get to the heart of it. The way to win now is the super team. And the super team is made of superstars. Tanking gets you high picks. That does not get you a superstar. That gets you a young player. Now, if you're talking about high picks to trade for a superstar and having assets, fine. But even still, you have to have players that want to play together. The players have all the power now. That's the super team argument that I already talked about. They got all the power. So it has nothing to do with what your cap space and assets are, what your city looks like. The players have to want to play together. That's the only way you can win. And so you tanking pretty much says that anybody on this team is not going to be here. Like, take the Bulls, for example. If Zach Levine gets better, if Dunn gets better, marketing, um, Wendell Carter, whoever, it doesn't matter because when you tank, you're selling these people don't play hard or you you don't tell them that because they're going to compete, but you're sitting them out in crucial moments. You're not letting them compete fully. You're telling the coach and, uh, uh, you know, unwhispered conversations don't win. And so how do you ever develop a champion locker room? How do you develop a cha- champion coach? How do you develop a champion player or culture when you're tanking? You can't. So the only way for you to then turn around and win is to clear house, to do Miami. Everybody keeps talking about with the super team with LeBron now, oh, Miami didn't do this, or they weren't that good before LeBron them got, duh, that team didn't come back. Wade came back, and they cleared most of that out. They brought Wade, LeBron, Bosh, and they started bringing in a bunch of new pieces. Like, that's not, if the Bulls ever came super team, Hoiberg won't be here, and none of the players on our roster, uh, and none of the starters would be a part of it. The super team is not a plug of, this not what it used to be. It's not getting a star and okay, we can compete. No, it's clearing that whole deck out and bringing in a group of stars that want to play together. So the whole tanking thing, it, it develops bad habits, and, and it's, you're biding time. You're wasting time, really, because these people aren't going to be a part of the plans if you were going to be a super team. It, they just won't because you're going to have to trade your valuable pieces to uh, open up cap space in if you need a sign and trade, and or you're going to probably get rid of the coach and bring in a different coach because you're going to blame him for losing even though you asked him to lose so you can get high picks, these teams keep getting high picks and firing their coaches after what you asked them to do. And so it's silly. And and to me, it's just, it it doesn't foster any type of progression or growth or anything. And I was thinking about that today. I'm like, all these superstars, 
it's kind of like they're in G League. They're not even in the NBA. They're in the G League. They're, they're playing on their little team. Their team's not trying hard. They're not building around them. Even if they do, they can't compete with the super teams of LeBron and Golden State. So it's like they're just getting better. They're getting better to the point they're the superstar. And then when it's their turn, they can go form a super team. That's all it is. They're just, they're just in their proving grounds. They're not even really, uh, competing right now. And it ain't like it used to be where, yeah, it wasn't your turn. In 89, 88, Mike, it wasn't your turn. And you're getting better and pipping them. You're getting better and ready for it to be your turn. But it was your team's turn. Now it's just the superstar's turn. Now the team ain't competing and growing together and being coached together. No, the star is. And then eventually he's going to go somewhere to team up with other stars. And so there's no progression, which means no competition, which means why am I watching the NBA? Now, my other point is, where did tanking work? That's what kills me. Super teams, I can at least understand. We saw LeBron and them get together and devastate the league. But where did tanking work? There's the first real case of true tanking, and the one that probably had the most success is the Sixers. And what they are right now is just being decent this year. And so eventually maybe they'll be on, but you're talking about years upon years and they haven't won no championship. So why is everyone trying to tank? Tanking has not worked. And I, okay, let's say, uh, let's say you take out, um, you take out Noel, you take out or Noel, whatever, you take out Michael Carter Williams. You take out Jaleel Okafor, uh, even if you want to say Fultz, whatever. Let's say you just hit on Ben Simmons and Embiid. Back to back. That was my first two drafts. Ben Simmons and Embiid, they both hit. And we got this good team where we are now. We're doing good in the East uh, playoffs. What does that really mean? Because you're going to go up against a super team in LeBron that you can't beat. And so my point again is that it has not worked. Now, I'm not saying, oh, there's no point in playing. I'm not saying that. But what was the point of you wasting all them years tanking just to get to the same point everybody else is where they can't beat the super team? Now, that goes back to the point these feed into each other. It's a vicious circle. Super teams create tanking and it goes back and forth. They make each other work and it makes the league worse. But my point being is tanking hasn't proved to work anywhere. Yes, you get assets and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Yes, you do that. But if the player don't want to be there, it don't matter. Cleveland had all these first round picks. Cleveland had Kyrie Irving, very attractive. Cleveland had all this cap space, very attractive. But if LeBron didn't want to go there, it didn't matter. And they weren't tanking to get LeBron, so that doesn't, you know. But my point is, if they don't want to go there, they don't want to go there. Because that's the only way you're going to win. So, I honestly think super teams, like I said, that's the number one problem. You break that up, then you start helping tanking out. But tanking is so bad for sports because it just, it's not, excuse me, it's not just what we're seeing now, but it's kids watching it. It's athletes watching it that are going to grow up and just, be a part of that. And it's not cool. It's not cool to teach athletes not to compete. It's terrible. No coach likes it. Fans, some fans, all a lot of fans are on board with it, but I don't see why. It, it doesn't make sense. Like everybody's mad. The Bulls and had no one pick. So if the Bulls suck, they truly sucked. They did everything they could. They got rid of good people just to get one good person in Aiden. Where does that leave us? That don't leave us nowhere. You talking about three, five years of tank? Like what? Who's going to trade their big stars for young rookies or, uh, you know, three year young players? Nobody. They're not about to give you Paul George for Devin Booker. They're not about to give you Kevin Durant for Devin Booker. Like they're not giving you a day for, um, 
for Ben Simmons. It's not happening. And so you're talking about years of trying to get these players together, then trying to get them healthy, trying to get them to build chemistry, and then trying to compete. It's a long process, and I'm not down for it. Now, other sports, it's still around. It's not as prevalent, but it's around. Now, with football, again, it's hard to do it because people is physical. People get hurt. But the Browns sure tried it. They definitely tried. And then not so much tanking, but let's strip our current assets to get young assets and really youth the team up. Now, we'll see what they do this year, but so far it hasn't looked good at all. Like So far, football has shown you it does not look good at all. But football is different because... You can change your fortunes with a good draft. And I've said this before, the NBA doesn't have that luxury, and that's a bigger problem that they should be looking at. Why is it that we can't find quality talent consistently throughout the draft? That's a question they need to ask themselves. And then in baseball, you got the Cubs even did it. And so these prospects, but again, those prospects don't come in and play. Those prospects go to the minor league and, you know, this is NBA, they don't do that. Those people come in and you're hitching your wagon to them. And so it's a different type, but at least in baseball, tanking is work. Like you saw it uh, work for the Cubs and you saw other teams it worked for. So, and people are doing that. But overall, the message is wrong. It's anti-competitive. And it it just it doesn't help the sport. It doesn't help uh, the league for the NBA. It, it's sad to sit here and see just ten teams on on average that aren't even trying and are really trying to be terrible. While people still raise ticket prices and and expect you to pay for the, to watch these games and stuff, it, it's terrible. And I know Silver doesn't like it. A lot of people try to say this way it is. Silver doesn't like it. Adam Silver has said he don't like soup teams. He don't like the tanking thing. And he's trying to fight. He might not be like raging in the media, but he's behind closed doors. He's trying to fight it. And there's a reason. If the commissioner's trying to fight it, obviously it's not good for the league. So anyway, that's how I feel about tanking. Um, for people that are fans of, I just want you to point to me where it works. Point to me where it works. Where are you going to end up with tanking? Because I haven't seen it work yet. Um, but anyway, go to the comment section. Let me know what you thought. Thumbs up, subscribe, share it around. Uh, get the convo started. And thank you for listening.